So once you build your VPC, the next important thing you need to understand for this dynamic project or the previous one we did is how to create your security groups. Because if you have issues in your VPC, when you deploy your application and you try to access it, you will get errors. And that's when you will understand what's going on. Also, if you don't open the right ports on your security groups for the resources you are using to host the application, you also run into issues when you are trying to access your application, which is one of the main common problem I see is that the security group is not set correctly. And let's just use this demo to go through the reference architecture for this project. And I will show you how I come up with my security groups. To help you guys map out how we need to create our security groups, you can see the lines here and I have color code the line. So this is one, two, three, four. That is letting you know you need four security groups. Let's start with the first security group. We will say this line with this yellow color is the first one. And this is the security group we will create for our EC2 instance connect endpoint. We know based on the AWS documentation and when we worked on the demo for the EC2 instance connect endpoint that in order to open the necessary port to use the EC2 instance connect endpoint to connect to any resource in your VPC, it can be either private or public subnet. All you need to do is open port 22 on the outbound. You know, when we create our security groups, we have inbound rules and outbound rules. So according to the AWS documentation, there is not going to be any rule in the inbound rule, but for the outbound rule, we are going to open port 22 and we are going to limit the source of that traffic to our VPC CIDR block. So whatever your VPC CIDR block is, that is what you will limit the source of the traffic to. The VPC CIDR block that I'm using is the same one I have specified on my reference architecture. That is why I am pointing at it here. If your VPC CIDR is different, make sure that you have limited the source of that traffic to your VPC CIDR. And remember, for the EC2 instance connect endpoint, this is only on the outbound. I'm going to work on getting a pen or a notepad to be able to write better because I'm doing this with my mouse. So please excuse my rough notes. So that is the first security group we need to create. It is the security group for the EC2 instance connect endpoint. You are going to open port 22 on the outbound and you are going to limit the source of that traffic to the CIDR block of your VPC. So someone take note of that if you guys want to have like, like key notes for things you guys need to do. So that is the first security group. The second security group we are going to create is for our application load balancer here. And that is the traffic I have color coded as, I believe this is blue. My wife always say I'm colorblind, so I believe this is blue. So for this security group for the load balancer, you can see the arrow that this is how the end users, the end users means that people that are going to be accessing our website. For example, when you guys type google.com, amazon.com, apple.com, or whatever website you guys are accessing, you are the end user. You are typing their domain name to access their website. According to how our application is designed, since we are putting our server in the private subnet, the users does not have direct access to our servers. The only way the end users can access our application is through the load balancer. So here we are saying when the end user type our domain name, let's say www.aziz.com, right? They will be accessing our site like this. The traffic will go from the end user's computer where they type the URL to the load balancer. We know that this traffic is always on port 80 and 443. This is just a general knowledge. Once you start working on applications, everybody knows this. When the end users use the internet to access your application, they're accessing it on port 80 and port 443. The 80 is the unencrypted version, 443 is the encrypted version. So now that you know that your end users is going to be accessing your site on port 80 and port 443, that means that on this application load balancer, the security group we are going to open will allow these users to be able to access this load balancer. That is why for the security group for the load balancer, we are going to open port 80 and port 443. And the next question you have to ask yourself is, where is the source of the traffic coming from? As you guys know, let's say I deploy this application today and you guys are trying to access it. All of you guys are in different parts of the world. So we don't know the specific location where you guys will be accessing 
our application. For example, if you have a business, you don't know the exact IP address or CIDR block that your end users will be using to access your application. That is why when we open port 80 and port 443 to access our load balancer, right, we are putting the source of that traffic to anywhere in the world, which is 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0. Because we don't know where these users will be accessing the application from. So we are saying for the source of their traffic, it is going to be from anywhere in the world. And don't worry about opening this to anywhere in the world because AWS is managing the application load balancer and based on the things that application load balancer is able to do, they have also built the security and everything into it for the application load balancer to be able to accept traffic from anywhere in the world. So that is your second security group. I am saying at this point, the second security group will be for your application load balancer. On this security group, you would open inbound port 80 and port 443, and the source of both traffic will be from anywhere in the world. That is your second security group. Then the next security group is the one we are going to add to the server our end users are trying to access, which is our web server. So how security is built into our reference architecture is that when the end users are trying to access our application on port 80 and port 443, right? They're accessing it from anywhere in the world and they're accessing it on port 80 and port 443. So that means that when they type our domain name, their traffic is going to go from here to the load balancer. So when the load balancer receives their request, because let's understand something that is going on on the back end of when you guys type a domain name or you go to a website, you're trying to buy your favorite outfit or whatever you are buying, right? When you are typing stuff in your URL, really you are requesting some information that is on their server here. You are requesting an information that is on their server. So when you type that request in our application, your request comes from here, from your web browser to the load balancer. When the load balancer receives your request, according to the security we have built into our reference architecture, the load balancer is now going to take your request and forward it to the servers. That is the green arrow you are seeing. So the load balancer will take your request and forward it to the server. Once the load balancer forwards your request to the server, Let's say, for example, the load balancer is going to tell the server, yeah, wants information on this outfit, right? If the information is there, the server will respond back to the load balancer that this is the information yeah is looking for, right? Then at that point, once the load balancer receives the information, it would present it back to you. That is how the information you are looking for on anybody's website is being displayed. When you type something, you are really requesting something on their server and you are getting a response back. If you guys understand it from that perspective, it will make a lot of things um, easy for you to understand. So to set our security group, we've said when you request something, it goes to the load balancer, the load balancer receives it. Then the load balancer is the one that's going to act on your behalf and ask the server. So that is why when we set our security group for the server, here, we know that the request you are making, you are trying to access it on port 80 and port 443. When the load balancer receives it, it is not going to change. The traffic is still going to be coming on port 80 and port 443. But the only difference now is, remember, your load balancer will accept your request and forward it to the server. So here, we are saying for this server, you should only accept a request that is coming from the load balancer, not the end user. So that is why when we open port 80 and port 443 on the server security group, right? We are limiting it to the security group of the application load balancer. So basically what I'm saying is for your third security group, you are going to open port 80 and port 443, and you are going to limit the source of the traffic to the application load balancer security group because the application load balancer is the only one. Let me erase some of it. Yeah, so we are saying for the third security group, you are opening port 80 and port 443, and you are limiting it to the application load balancer security group. That is the green portion of this arrow, the green arrow you see. You can see the arrow. How I try to communicate that idea to you guys is, you can see the arrow is only going from the web server to the load balancer. It is not going here, meaning that only this application load balancer is able to access this web server. And the only other inbound rule you also need to open on your 
web server is 22 because we need to be able to SSH into it, right? We need to use the EC2 instance connect endpoint to SSH into it and do some administration work, which is how we install our application and stuff like that. For that, we know we are going to SSH into our web server on port 22. And for the source of that traffic, if you look at the arrow, what does the arrow point back to? The EC2 instance connect endpoint. What I am saying is, when you open port 22 to SSH into your web server, you will limit the source of the traffic to the security group you have attached to your EC2 instance connect endpoint. This is the rules you are going to need on the third security group. Port 80 and 443, the source we're going to is going to be from the ALB security group. And the port 22 traffic, the source is going to be from the EC2 instance connect endpoint security group. And the last security group you are going to need for this application is for the database. So that is the fourth security group. And if you also look at the arrow, the database for our application sits here. And we are saying that all these other services we have in our VPC or wherever those services are, they don't have a business accessing our database. The only resource that needs access to our database is the web servers. That is why you can see this arrow is only going from the web server to the database. So what this means is that since our database is a MySQL database and MySQL works on port 3306, we are going to open port 3306 on the security group for the database. And we are saying that our database is only going to allow traffic on port 3306 if that traffic is coming from the web server. So that is why for the source, of this inbound rule, you are going to limit it to your web server. So that is how you set your security group. These are the four security groups you will need for this application.